Hey. Um, so I've never given a talk this early, so I hope everybody's awake. It's a really easy topic. It's about uh, cryptographically secure random number generators. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's probably the best topic to start it early in the morning. Um, I'm an independent consultant for IT security and uh, large-scale um, distributed systems, so HPC installations, um, web clusters, and the like. Um, on the agenda, there's a different um, different title for the talk, unfortunately. Um, I, I use this one because it's um, a bit, it fits the talk more. Um, um, there used to be, like, uh, just um, to explain why it's called Because You Random Isn't Everything, there used to be this really well-known, or there still is around the um, blog post by Thomas Pacek, um, a cryptographer from Matasano and uh, later on different companies, um, about why you should always use dev U random on a Unix or a Linux system. Um, I'm going to go into a, um, a, um, some details why this isn't always true. In general, it's true, um, but there are corner cases and there, there is a lot of um, things that um, people seem to sti still get wrong when, when they're dealing with uh, RNGs. Um, okay, so, so easy intro. Why do we need to, to random, uh, why, we, why do we need random numbers? Um, you need to randomize stuff in your operating system or in your programming language. Um, the easy and, and probably not best example is uh, the Seaman page for round. Um, or Python US random, where you get um, the random device. Um, one example would be TLS session cookies. Um, these are randomized. Uh, session tickets, sorry, not session cookies. Um, then there is uh, key generation, for example, um, for RSA keys um, and for Diffie-Hellman. Um, another example would be string cookies in your TCP stack on your operating system. And the really bad example is um, bash random. <laughs> which will output a couple of random numbers. Um, so what is a CSPRNG? Um, cryptographers usually talk about a CSPRNG, um, which is um, an acronym for cryptographically secure pseudo random number generator. Um, most of you would still call it um, an RNG or random number generator. Um, to keep this talk not too verbose, I will probably call it RNG or random number generator during the talk as well. Um, but most crypto nerds, in my experience, tend to call them CSPRNGs. Um, I don't really care what you call them, as, uh, as long as they're secure, and as long as it's a secure construction. Um, I need to see my own slide. Um, so they are widely implemented in operating system kernels, obviously. Um, as you've seen on, on one of the last slides, you need them for very basic things, or very, very um, important things like um, TCP and TLS, um, either in user land or in the kernel. There is now a TLS stack for the kernel, by the way, on Linux. Um, so on Linux, this would be the def uh, random device. Um, the man page has been wrong for years. Um, and this is the reason why there has been a, a lot of discussion, um, either in implementations um, in um, programming languages or within the Linux kernel developer um, community. So the, the man page has been fixed, um, I think, last December, late last December. Um, it has be, been wrong for more than 10 years. Um, and it's just the base, basic things about how um, entropy is gathered in the kernel and how it's used and how you actually get information about um, entropy that is available um, that's wrong in there. Um, there have been many myth, myths about um, what you should actually do to achieve better boot time entropy on embedded systems and even on a, like a large server farm if you clone instances. Um, and there have been many really bad approaches to that. Um, for example, Canonical had a, um, had a, um, a script that was called Pollinate. It was just basically a bash script that would um, seed instances for, um, like Juju is their um, stack for large server um, uh, deployments. And they would just see over HTTP with uh, stuff you could intercept. So you, like somebody that was able to um, intercept traffic on the, um, on the, um, sorry, on the, I'm really tired, <laughs> on the um, uh, hosting network um, could just easily um, modify the seeds of every instance that that would be cloned. Um, and that was, for example, a reason why they did that, like there, there's, uh, there used to be interfaces exposed to the user that, that would show you 
um, a number about the entropy that is available in the system, but it didn't really matter what, what the number said. It was usually more than enough for everything that, that was going on right after the, right after the first boot up, like after the first couple of seconds. Um, for FreeBSD, um, the device is def random, like either u random or whatever random. It always links to def u random. Um, it has been the same implementation for a long time. They had a, they had a, short, uh, a problem with it um, in the development branch where they um, fucked up AS and I instructions, basically the RDC um, process where they were gathering entropy from um, modern um, Intel processes was broken in um, one branch. I don't think it was a, um, <coughs> I don't think it was a, um, an active like uh, release branch. It was a development branch as far as I remember. There's been some news, like they replaced the RC4 algorithm with an in-kernel secure random number with charger uh, 20 um, for an API. Um, um, that's basically, the, they basically copied that from OpenBSD as far as I remember. Um, on Windows you have RTL gen random um, and another, another syscore. And in programming languages you have different, uh, different um, functions exposed. For example, in Python you have um, via import US, you have uRandom. In PHP you have rounds, which, is re which isn't really secure, maybe in newer versions. Um, there have been some bad bugs for a long time, uh, um, over the time, obviously. Yet uh, Debian predictable keys, which was um, due to uh, a user land error. Um, where one of the Debian developers was trying to fix a well grind, so a memory issue, and uh, by accident messed with the net random number, number generator. Um, so, um, many use the kernel provided CSPRNG, uh, many, many program languages, others um, use OpenSSL. Um, or even worse, custom random number generators, uh, raters, which, is, which is bad. Um, I'll come back to OpenSSL. Um, OpenSSL is a user space um, library, as, as most of you know. And uh, as far as I know, like there has been a, re a recent blog post by the OpenSSL core team um, that they'll uh, look into their random number generator facility and how it works, and that they'll do a proper audit of it. Um, I'm not sure where they are right now with that, but for, for most um, use cases, the OpenSSL RNG is quite good for TLS, but I don't know if it's really really audited for general use cases you, you might want in a pro programming languages. Um, and I haven't seen proper audits of it. I, I know that some people um, have public and um, private bugs with, with, the, with the OpenSSL RNG, at least in earlier versions. Um, and there has been a really recent issue with uh, GCC, who, uh, which incorrect, uh, which uh, generated incorrect code for RD Rand and RD Seed intrinsics. Um, it was just nice to put in there. Um, so even your your compiler could get this wrong, right? Um, you, even your compiler could mess with um, RD Rand and RD Seed specific um, code that you might um, use um, to to build a custom random number generator, right? So you really have to know the whole stack, the whole operating system. Um, so, um, uh, to, to get this right. So some history, yeah. The def and def random devices have been used for, uh, 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 used to be really old code. And originally by Ted Zo, in the Linux kernel at least, in the early 90s. Um, they haven't been changed around a lot, as, as far as I know, like except for minor um, documentation commits and um, some bug fixes that haven't been really like security disasters. Um, again, the mempage has been, been wrong for a really long time and was only fixed until uh, uh, was only fixed last December. Um, so the mempage was the reason why many people have this um, wrong understanding about kernel entropy and what it means. Sorry, um, and like there is also this myth that comes from this man page that you should use tools like HefGHE or other um, other um, tools that will improve your en your system en entropy on embedded systems or on your server farm. Um, this can actually make things worse depending on what you, what you use and which platform you're on. Um, there's this nice blog blog post by DJB. Um, on entropy attacks, for example, if you want to look uh, into more academic details of that. Um, okay. 
So um, the old kernel implementation in Linux up until 4.1 or something like that uh, was mixing different pools of interrupts. And um, it was quite complicated to understand, even for, for well versed C programmers, in my opinion at least. I talked to a couple of people who were kernel developers and said they're, they're not touching it. They know it works, but um, they, don't, they don't really know how it works. Um, it works as far as I know um, without large in incident, incidents, probably because of pure luck and some of the researchers that looked into it just gave up as far as I know. I, I talked to a couple of them. They said, yeah, it's just not that interesting of a topic to, to work on. Um, but there's two really well written blog posts about that. Um, one is by Aaron Topnons. Um, it's about the old Linux kernel random number generator facility, so DEFU random. Um, and there's an academic paper from, from 2012 with like 25 pages that ex explains the old uh, random number generator facility in the Linux kernel really well. So if you want to get into that, you can read up on that. Um, but it's not the current implementation. Um, so the, the current implementation is, is a different one. Uh, after long discussions and advice by cryptographers and security engineers, um, the design was changed in a random C um, chart device, and it's based on the old pools that they already have in there, and ENS, uh, AS and I instructions, if they're available on, this, um, on the platform. So if you're running on a modern Intel or AMD CPU, you'll have these instructions available. Um, so AS and I has these RDC instructions, and they are XOR to charge at 20. So even if there would be like, so the idea behind this uh, comes originally, as far as I know, from um, Google's um, branch of OpenSSL, which is called Boring SSL by Adam Langley. Um, the idea is if um, Intel has uh, like this intention to have a bad seed in, in his, or, or is biasing the seed of the, of, the, of the CPU or somebody like the, the Chinese manufacturer of some chips uh, was messing with, uh, with, with uh, the, the hardware um, and would, would bias the output of this uh, instruction <laughs> um, by sorting it against uh, this PRF, uh, a charge of 20, you would still have a secure output. Um, and that with like high performance. Um, and it's quite neat and it's backtracking resistant, so that means even if you have at some point in time um, you find out what the seed would be, you cannot go back in time and find out um, earlier, how do I say that, um, earlier um, states of the random number generator. That's like the easy, easy way to, to explain it. But that's like not a really good benchmark, but you can see um, that it's quite, quite fast. So that's like 90 megabytes with DD, and DD used to be like a couple of megabytes with the old implementation. Of course, you can do a proper benchmark. Um, so um, apart from that, there have be, there have, uh, there's been other major work overhauling the crypto code in the kernel that started with Linux uh, 4.2. Uh, so there's a backtracking uh, protection was added. Um, this is this um, commit. Um, one nice thing I found in, in, the, um, in the whole development history uh, was like this uh, um, post by that. So was with, with Dev U Random, we were always emitting more bytes than we needed. Um, uh, sorry, always more bytes than we had and should be available because not blocking was considered more important. Previously, we were relying on the security of SHA-1 with um, ASCT DRBG, which is the internal kernel developer name for the new... Um, Design, we rely on the security of AES. Um, it doesn't track entropy anymore um, because the cryptographically secure random number generator in their terminology is faster. So the exposed, like there used to be this proc device that, it, that it was exposed that would tell you how much entropy the kernel has available, and that's just gone. So people cannot mess with that anymore or try to write more entropy into the, uh, into the uh, random, random device. Um, yeah, they replaced the uRandom pool with a CRNG. Um, there is a couple of other nice um, comments on that. Um, and one important thing is like this post by um, Nikos from um, GNU TLS. I know when I share this opinion um, to the defense, they will have to provide a call which doesn't make applications fail in the following scenario. 
Um, crypto SSL libraries are compiled to use get random because it's available in the libc, uh, in libc and in the kernel. Everything works fine. The administrator downgrades the kernel to a version without get random because this net network card works better with that version mayhem as application phase. So um, you may have heard that there's uh, this get random syscall that is now in, in newer versions uh, of, the, of libc that, that is exposed to people. Um, but yeah, this, this would be like a, a, um, a, a way to, to to, to break uh, user land applications that rely on that. Um, so they also made uh, URandom scalable for silly user land programs that was the commit. It's just something um, that is um, uh, specific to NUMA systems um, with a lot of cores and so, ah, with a lot of sockets, sorry. Um, um, so yeah, and the myths in the man 4 rampage were finally corrected. Again, that took, took years, and it's one of the, the major things. It's, it's so important for this talk because it's, uh, it's why um, a lot of the programming language designers um, were, were so hard to convince that they should change what they were using to, to um, use the, the, the operating system provided random number generator. So to go into that, um, Ruby has been using since um, really early versions uh, the, the OpenSSL random number generator. Um, which is designed for TLS, and as far as I know, it's quite secure for TLS, but it's not a general purpose RNG, or at least it hasn't been properly audited as far as I know for, um, for that use case. Um, there has been this really long um, discussion about changing that. So I found a, block, uh, a bug, bug report in, in the Ruby core um, language um, bug tracker where somebody noticed that like a couple of years ago and said, are you guys changing that at some point? Using the OpenSSL RNG might not be the best, best option available, just use URandom on, um, if it's available, or depending on what, which operating system you're on, um, choose, choose the appropriate uh, kernel facility. Um, so I picked this bug report up and then uh, posted it on Twitter, um, among other things, and sent it to a couple of people. And like a lot of security engineers and uh, cryptographers were, were, were um, chiming into the thread and writing them they should change this, uh, and they really didn't see why. <laughs> so it's like I, I got a response with "Please don't root," <laughs> to to like a really long um, and intricate discussion about why this why they, why they should change this. Um, and they also said like "secure random." That's like the the at the facility in, in uh, Ruby for secure random, number, uh, random numbers and bytes without open SSL or comparative, com comparable alternatives is nonsense. So I think it's a legendary bug <laughs> just because it go goes on forever. It's like um, almost 50 messages or something like that. And then in the end, after they changed the man page for the Linux kernel in late December, they actually changed the whole facility. Like 10 cryptographers and security engineers trying to convince them with like thousands of, of blog posts. I posted a couple of academic papers on the topic. Um, didn't convince them to change um, the, um, the secure random facility from OpenSSL to something that is more sane. Um, what they do now is use something similar to what Frank Dennis wrote, uh, Lipsodium. They have their own implementation that is kind of based on what Open, OpenBSD does. Um, but that aside, I've looked at it, it actually looks quite, quite sensible. So depending on which system you're on, it will use the, the appropriate kernel facility. Um, because you might not always be on Linux, right? Um, some people will use Ruby on Windows or on OpenBSD. Um, yeah, for the time being, Tony Arichieri wrote a wrapper for the thing. Um, which was called sysrandom, that was just, uh, was just an in, in play, uh, an, uh, a replacement, um, that was just override the, the function call and use urandom. Or he actually, no, he actually used, um, lipsodium in that, or the, the lips, the relevant lipsodium code. Uh, I think Frank Dennis is giving a talk on lipsodium later on in the day if you're interested in how, what, what, uh, the whole library does. It's a really, really good cryptography library in my opinion. And the code is, is quite good. I could be more comments, <laughs> but apart from that, it's, it's very readable. Um, so Node.js is a similar story to, to Ruby. Um, there has also been like, there's a bug report on, on GitHub for, for the same thing. 
with a couple of hundred messages. It's at least two to three hundred messages with normal users that have no idea of the topic, just writing some something like this guy is right because I like him. Um, so uh, the the whole thread is completely useless by now. I just gave up on it. I don't think they're changing that. Um, the latest comment when I looked into it was that um, OpenSSL Lambda commits to use a different uh, DRBG, and yeah, we can use that. So yeah, they they think it's best uh, to use uh, OpenSSL for the time being. Um, so um, Node.js, for example, has has their own tree of um, oh, sorry, Node.js has their own tree of uh, OpenSSL in their in their code. So all of the all of the libraries they depend on. They just take a snapshot of and, and will have a copy in their, in their own tree, which they, they maintain. So they have their own version of OpenSSL they need to maintain for that, just for some basic function calls like random. Um, in my opinion, that's like an extra burden for, for, for a program, programming language to have. Like you have to maintain your own version of OpenSSL you're depending on. They also do that for other libraries, by the way. Um, same issue with Erlang, as far as I know. Like I, I looked at it and it looks exactly the same uh, as Ruby and Node.js. As far as I know, nobody brought it up with the Erlang people for now. Um, I wrote to some of the uh, some of the developers, but I haven't really got any feedback. It was like a year ago already, more than a year. Um, yeah, Python has been secure for a long time. Like there is there isn't any issue with Python two or Python three when it when it comes to secure random uh, numbers. It will use the appropriate facility depending on the operating operating system you're on. Um, although it's called us.urandom, uh, it will always use the, the appropriate facility from the kernel. Um, but they have an improvement lately in, um, in Python 3 um, if they're insecure values, uh, values in some corner cases. Um, so yeah, the OpenSSL RNG, why shouldn't you use that? It's not thread safe, it's user space, and it's prone to bugs. So if, if somebody wants to attack the RNG in, in a certain application and doesn't have access to the application itself, or it's like a distributed system where um, they would access um, the, this facility on, an, on another machine. It would make sense to attack, for example, the, R, um, the OpenSSL RNG. Um, and it's not even like if you look at the, the issues, uh, the open issues in OpenSSL and the, the wiki from OpenSSL, it says don't do not use this as a prop, as an RNG for anything serious except for maybe TLS. Because we're using that from, for TLS as well, and that's, that works quite well. Um, so if like, and that's the stuff um, I brought up with uh, the Ruby Ruby guys, and in Node.js, like I told them, even the OpenSSL team says you shouldn't use um, this, their RNG for for like general purpose um, things that aren't um, TLS specific, um, and nobody was convinced by that. I don't know. Um, many people bring that up. There is this tool that is called HefGAG um, that has been around for, I think, more than 10 years, 15 years. So um, somebody brought it up recently in a, in a discussion of a, um, of a crypto mailing list again, um, why, why you should or should not use HefGAG to improve your entropy and your randomness on your system. Like, that's, that's what they thought. Um, so one guy was brave enough to mail all of the 10 core maintainers of HFGAG, um, out of which one replied, and most of the mail accounts were bouncing. Um, the one maintainer that replied from HFGAG um, told us he hasn't looked at the code for more than 10 years. He's sure that it's quite secure still, <laughs> um, but it's completely unmaintained. He didn't say that, he said it's like it's secure still. He thinks like the, the general way it works should still work. And then I looked at the code and at the early papers and most of the most of the facilities are designed for old Spark systems. Um, so they, they'll use uh, specific interrupts to like uh, uh, from Spark CPUs um, or earlier Intel Intel CPUs. Um, there is there are no cur uh, no current security contacts. There is there has been no security uh, audit of of the code except for um, the one in the original um, academic paper by the by the original authors, and it doesn't really improve any security at all. It might even uh, bias your 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 entropy um, even more. Um, so people come back to me like I, I've I've given a similar talk at Shaw. 
and people were coming up in the Q&A afterwards, what about embedded systems? Why shouldn't we use FGAG on there? So ideally on an embedded system, um, the, the uh, manufacturer that, that, that um, puts out a, a device would have a kernel developer um, that um, adds the appropriate calls to get proper randomness for a certain device into this, the Linux kernel, depending on uh, what, what, what an embedded system exposes or, or what facilities it has. Like if, if it's an embedded system without a network card, without a real-time clock, yeah, that's, that's bad, but half GAG won't, won't, won't make a difference there. Right? Um, and I think I only have five minutes left, and that's it, so questions. Sorry, I'm still very Thank you, Aaron. So, any questions? I know it's really hard at this time of the day to ask questions. The first person to ask a question gets a bottle of matter. <laughs> no, no takers? No? It'll wake you up. Yes, there you go. Question at the back. People will do anything for this. Matter and the microphone. Hello. Um, when you, s you often said in your talk that you weren't able to convince people to improve things or not to do things, uh, from your point of view, what would be needed in the future to convince people not to do things that will break other things? You mean, for for example, the Ruby core developers? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, but what was needed in their case was uh, for the Linux kernel documentation team to change the random number main page, and that was it. Okay. So they, they were completely, like, all of the statements were completely relying on, on statements made in the old and wrong uh, rands, uh, random, you random man page. Um, since that was fixed last December, they said, okay, we're going to use something that looks more convincing, and they actually did some research on that. It really depends on the, develop the, the developers you get to, to speak to. I mean, some of them are really stubborn, others will be easy to talk to and convince, at least, uh, especially if there's like 10 people telling them the same thing. Um, some of them have great academic track, uh, track records, but they just didn't care. Um, it really depends on, on the project and the people you're dealing with, I guess. So, uh, in general, it would be more people pitching in and talking to people. I, I mean, on some of these bug reports, we had all, like five cryptographers and a couple of security engineers uh, Writing, writing to them and telling them the same thing over and over again, and I, I sent them like ten academic papers on the, on the topic and, and like linked to to the OpenSSL wiki and main pages and, and everything, but that didn't help at all. Only after the after the the Linux kernel documentation team changed the main page around to something sane, they actually changed the way they they uh, they uh, exposed the random number uh, random number generator in secure random in the in the function of uh, in the function calls of, of Ruby. Um, so, yeah, it really depends on the, on the project you're dealing with and the people you're dealing with, I guess. Okay, thanks. There is no general answer to that. I, I okay, thank you. Any more questions? I can bribe you with more bottles of matter if you, if you want. Oh, another question. As soon as I mention that, everybody wants to ask questions. <laughs> Can I choose the type of bottle? Yeah. Can I choose the type of bottle? Yeah, you can have well. Oh, great. <laughs> um, why is the um, random generator sufficient for open SSL, but not sufficient for other things? Um, it's only been audited for TLS, so for the TLS use case. Um, people have been looking at um, open SSL in general, if they audit it, they've been looking at it as a TLS library. But some people, it's a general, it's a general cryptography library, right? You can use it for disk encryption as well, or just handshakes in like your, your custom crypto protocol you're, you're trying to build. Um, but most of the most of the security audits have been focused on TLS, and as far as I know, there hasn't been a proper audit of the random number generator. But from what I know, from like for example, Google security engineers, they, they looked at it at least for the TLS use case and for the, for, the, for the stuff they were using it initially for. They changed the whole facility afterwards in boring SSL in their own fork of OpenSSL, which they use internally. Um, but for that use case, as far as I know, it's secure, but there isn't, hasn't been a proper audit. Um, the OpenSSL team has uh, announced that they are uh, going to do a proper audit and change the design of the random number generator in the future. Um, so there has been a recent blog post, I think, like two, two months ago or something like that. Okay, thanks. Uh, any other questions? 
By the way, the offer... Oh, yeah, see, more people want... More people want Matt there. This is a one-time-only offer, eh? It's only for the early birds that come to the first talk. Uh, just some small questions regarding virtual machines. Um, how do you deal with I mean, flow VM implementations that are relying on iOS and I um, command or uh, instruction sets, which is basically sometimes broken on VM? Um, so what is the impact of having, for example, broken VM implementations, not properly using the instruction set for the iOS and I? Uh, come again? So, so if you have a, a set of VMs and you have one VM implementation that are not properly um, having the instruction set from the uh, home OS or the own home hardware, where the iOS and I um, instruction set is available, but then they virtualize the set of the instructions. What is the impact of flowed implementations on the VM side for such kind of things? I still didn't get you, sorry. Okay. Uh, we can talk about it later on if you want. But uh, you're asking about virtu virtualized um, yeah, virtual environments machine. and AS and I? Or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, have, you, have you seen some broken implementation on virtual side on, on those ones? Like it's very possible that, that there are some bugs, but I haven't seen anything in that direction. Um, it's probably best to talk to people from VMware. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, but uh, we can talk about it later. Uh, like th there's probably stuff on, on, on the topic around, um, but I'm not sure right now. Yeah, I, I try to find some stuff, but it's very obscure. And sometimes you find indeed some bugs, and it's not very clear on the VMware side and so on. So like if you, uh, I mean, one of the one of the common bugs is if you have VMs and you clone um, an instance um, and you have the same seed already on the system, then then yeah, obviously. It's, it's an issue, but um, that's kind of fixed in most of the distributions, at least by now, um, due to various facilities in the, in the, in the user lab. Um. Okay, more questions? Okay, well, thanks. Uh, please give Aaron and I a very special early morning round of applause. <laughs>